Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar and welcome to another edition of the metric modulation videos. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos that I've recorded on these, I suggest you check them out so you get a good idea of what we're doing because we're going to hop right into this now. So this first thing that we're going to take a look at is a funky 16th note groove on our hi-hats and we're going to apply that as eighth note triplets. Again, similar to something that we've done in the previous videos. However, it's different this time because we can't use our left foot to anchor it in quarter notes because we're going to use our left foot opening and closing within this groove. Let's take it nice and slow, give her a listen, and you know, make sure you read along the PDF while we're doing this one. All right, so if you're doing the implied metric modulation version of this, it is of the utmost importance that you are feeling your original pulse. You have to be feeling this as eighth note triplets because you don't have anything that is anchoring you with this. Like you don't have your left foot playing quarter notes. You really, really need to be perceiving this properly because if you fall off the mark, getting out of this is gonna be a nightmare and it probably isn't gonna work out in your favor. All right, so this next groove we're going to take a look at is a halftime shuffle feel. And we're going to take it out of its eighth note triplet subdivision and we're going to put it into 16th notes. So we're going to make it seem like we're speeding up. Now, the cool thing about this that I really like is when you're perceiving these properly, like when you're actually feeling your 16th notes effectively while you're playing this modulation inside it, it becomes a really syncopated feeling. It feels really, really neat where all these notes are lining up against the pulse. So give it a listen, try and count along, and read along with the PDF. All right, so here's one for all you double bass players out there. Now, we're gonna take a fast triplet groove at 200 BPM. We're gonna rip along with this, and then we're gonna imply slowing down by playing the same pattern within eighth notes. Give her a listen, this one's a lot of fun. And again, as with most of these, they feel really cool when you perceive them properly. So make sure your head is in the pulse, the original pocket, because that doesn't change, this is a trick. Well, this way, you can apply it as an actual metric modulation too, but we're focusing on implied here. Okay, so this next one's a little more abstract. We're taking a funky groove in six based in triplets and we're gonna imply speeding up by using the same groove within 16th notes. Now the cool thing is that it turns out to be based in a really strange polyrhythm when you do this, at least the way that we have the pulse laid out for this groove. It turns into a four over nine, which <laughs> it's a little out there. You don't hear of that kind of thing too often. I'm not saying it's super difficult or anything, but it's just, it's different. It's an uncommon one. Uh, turns out kind of neat. Let's check it out. Okay, so one thing I just couldn't resist doing was taking one of the modulations right out of Gavin's book where he took that famous shuffle groove from Rosanna by Toto, played by Jeff Beccaro, of course, uh, and he implies it slowing down 
as 16th notes instead of sixes. So what I did is I'm not going to do it just like a typical modulation the way we have been doing, where we're going back and forth between the two different fields. I'm just going to take the 16th note version, which is six quarter notes in duration. Now let's take a 16th note bass, just syncopated funky groove, and we're going to use this as a fill to seem like we're slowing down, but it's a totally different pattern. It's just using this as the basis for something new. Uh, so it's gonna take the last bar and a half of our phrase. Let's hear it nice and slow and uh, make sure you read along because this one is kind of abstract. Okay, so you probably noticed that I purposely played this in a way that it was kind of subtle. Like obviously the rhythmic content was strange, but I didn't really accent what I was doing. I just started picking out the notes this way instead of the way they were previously within the groove. So I hope you guys liked it. Let's ramp up the tempo. All right, so that about sums it up for today. Now, I want you guys to take your own grooves and apply them within these rhythmic concepts. And you know, if you come up with something that's really cool, make a video, show me, email me, just connect. Like, I wanna see what you guys are doing with this kind of stuff, short of just, you know, copying what I'm doing to learn how they work. That's fine and all, but it's not gonna get you much unless you start making your own stuff with inside it. So, as always, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.